Don't shake your head like that. I see exactly what's going on in there. Mister, you've really created a problem in my household. Okay, yeah, sure I have. Evan, no good deed goes unpunished. Mm. That's the lesson of the day. And I'm mad at you, and I'm mad at you. Yeah, what's new? And I'm mad at you. All three of us. Dude, it's not my fault your basketball team sucks no, no, and can't forget. beat the Nets. Oh, yeah, the Knicks suck, the Knicks suck, the Don't Knicks blame suck. Me. We haven't beaten the Nets since Kobe was alive. Yeah. I mean, it's embarrassing what the New Yorks did last night. Down 25 at halftime. You know, my son does a Nick postgame show on uh, Twitter Spaces or something, right? With a company called U Stadium. They do a really nice job. He made a great point. The NBA, as we've learned over the years, is a game of runs. The Knicks don't make runs. They give you runs. <laughs> I mean, That's what, what an absolute travesty I thought it from a Knicks fan perspective. A beautiful it night was in Brooklyn. Last night. A beautiful night in yeah, Brooklyn. Great. You're what still was... dysfunctional. Have an anti Semite on your team and want to hire a sexual harassing head coach. Well, they didn't do Things either. are so good in Barclays. They didn't do either. Yeah. All right. And by the way, <laughs> on make, a... make me lash out of you. I'm sorry. On I, think very, I apologize. On a very serious note. Yeah, you didn't show up for my sandwich <laughs> naming event today. Well, you didn't remind me. Oh, now I have to remind an adult yes. where he's supposed to be yeah, because, at 11 30 on a Thursday. When, here's what I've learned. When yeah. you say something once yeah. and then that's it that's a sign that you actually don't want that person to come i said to the guys i'm gonna be at hill country barbecue today at 11 30 a week ago yeah that's right yes you remind yeah. people you say hey yeah like this morning you text me you get up early hey i just want to remind you no pressure but i'm going to be remind naming- you yes remind you yes we're adults we make plans. Craig. We show up Craig, for things. I have to remind it's you. It's called responsibility. All year during the baseball season, yeah. I would remind you, hey, by the way, Yankees have a day game tomorrow. And you're like, oh, thanks. Changes because my whole I day. I don't care if they have a day game or not. <laughs> I'm doing something for charity. Hill Country Barbecue on 26th between 5th and 6th. Now they're going to bring the sandwich in next week so that we can make it official because you knuckleheads didn't show up. And that includes you two over there. Ooh, we'd love to come for a sandwich naming event. Then I get to work. First of all, let me just say, hello to the pipe fitters I met up on 54th <laughs> and 10th. Bunch of great guys. Love our show. I love the pipe fitters of New York City. Great guys who made the point of saying, aren't you going to be late? <laughs> Yeah, I thought the same thing. <laughs> oh, yeah. So I get into work today at about, I don't know, 1.30 or so, right? The first thing I hear is, oh, the architect is like, I'm going to have a word with him. Yeah. He's not in the building yet. My job starts at 2. All right, so let's slow way, your roll I, on that. I told him that because the architect came to me and said, hey, when should we be worried? Yeah, when should we be and, worried? And here was my answer. Yeah, I yeah. said, first of all... Because Craig's doing uh, you know, charity work. Well, I When didn't, should we be worried? I didn't know that because you didn't remind us. But he tells me, when should we be worried? Yeah. And I said, listen, architect, I have so much trust in Craig. I yeah. wouldn't be worried until 159.30. I'm never late for work unless I've gotten in significant trouble. Or you just, That's it. Or you just fall asleep randomly in the middle of the street. By the way, which might happen. <laughs> yes. So I'm done doing God's work earlier today. And uh, the sandwich, by the way, is redonkulous. It's pork belly. It's moist brisket. It's pickles. It's homemade hot honey. And it goes to charity. Probably go to a local food bank. We'll get to that next week when they bring the official Southern Cartonian for you lousy friends to enjoy, right? Then I come in, and I got to deal with this idiot, all right, (laughs) who came to me on bended knee a week ago. Yeah. And said, oh, Craigie, yeah. just out of curiosity, I know you're friendly with the CEO of Solo Stove, an advertiser of the company. Um, looking for a little help? Looking for a Solo Stove. Can you help me out? Not a problem. Call the CEO up. Great guy. Happy to help out. They also have a new pizza oven that they're promoting. Great. Happy to promote it. Blah, blah, blah. They sent a pizza oven to Big Mac's house and not the original Solo stove fire pit. Either way, what a wonderful gift. Win-win. Right? What a wonderful gift. I come in today, and I hear this. 
Boy, you have really created a fiasco in my house. <laughs> you have really created drama for me that I don't need. And I go, well, what's the fiasco I've created? Mm -hmm. What kind of drama have I created? Because maybe I said something on the air. Every once in a while, I do. Wouldn't be the first okay? time. No. And, here's, and you're jumping right in today, yeah, though, by all means. Here's the yeah. drama I've somehow created. They sent him the wrong thing. Right. So rather than be gracious and say, wow, Someone just sent me a brand new solo stove pizza oven, mm -hmm. which we can enjoy as a family. I'm going to complain that I didn't get the thing I wanted. Either way, I'm not paying for it, but I didn't get the thing I wanted. And then I heard this, Evan, and this really got my goat, and I'm not going to let it drop. And I'm sorry that we're not coming out of the gate talking about the Knicks' embarrassing yeah. loss to the Nets. No, this we, is much more We important. have plenty of time. Here's, here's the thing that gets me, Evan, and I'm not sure if you even knew this. When he asked me to help him get a solo stove, it wasn't even for him. He asked me to get him something that he was then going to gift to somebody else in his family. By the way. But he asked me you, you know, to get it for him. And you know what's so wrong about that? Big mm -hmm. Mac's the same guy who not too long ago didn't like the fact that your gifts for him yeah. were on the arm. Yeah. And had an issue with that. That's Remember? not true at all. Interesting. So that's, that's what I, I came into So many today. inaccuracies in the last 30 seconds. So he didn't get the solo stove. He got the pizza oven. That is, that is He's true. He's giving his father-in-law the gift because they just built a deck and they work very hard. Yes. Uh, so now this is an unacceptable gift to give his father-in-law because he already has a pizza oven. He owns an effing restaurant up in Warwick, New York. Go enjoy it. It's a great Italian restaurant. And this disgraziat over here <laughs> sitting across the table from me, yeah. A, does not know how to say thank you. Then he's eyeballing my 1800 tequila yeah. like he's never seen a bottle before. <laughs> I'm not sure you've seen it either. It's yeah. been hanging out for three weeks. That's right. In my yeah. office. Yeah. That's right. So I was taking Ooh. a look at it. What does a bottle of tequila <laughs> look like? Yeah. Ooh. I wanted to see if it was the one I was thinking it was. Yeah, it's, and it, it was. it's not. It, it wasn't. Is. Yeah, you can't yeah. have it. That's fine. You, you can't have it. I didn't it. even ask you for and it. I don't I want it. I would have given it to you. Yeah. And the and so shirt many off my back. Yeah, sure you would have. Yeah, I inaccurate. want a solo then, stove. I yeah. want to re-gift the solo oh, stove. Please. I didn't get the First right of all, solo a couple stove. Things. How dare you send me a pizza <laughs> oven? The box is so big. What am I supposed to do with it? You're done. Turn your microphone off. The Knicks suck. <laughs> yes. And that's what it's all about right now. For the first time all year, this radio station suddenly woke up and pretended like other shows talk about basketball, which has never happened in the last nine months here, other than a little Brandon Tierney, because he does follow basketball, loves the Knicks, and does talk about, of course, you and I, because we're basketball fans. Last night was atrocious from our standpoint. Great from your standpoint. I respect that. Congratulations <laughs> to the victory go the spoils. You're a better team without Kyrie right now. Jacques Vaughn seems like a great guy. I'm actually happy for oh, him. Oh, thank you. Fantastic. Thank you. The Knicks, on the other hand, are an embarrassment, or they at least were last night. But I got to be honest. You asked me before the year began, what did I think the Knicks were going to do this year? I think I said 43 wins in that area, right? Yep. I'm getting exactly what oh, I knew dude, I was going to get. the definition of mediocre. They play they a 500 bad, basketball team, they, that's it. When they play bad teams, they beat them. When they play good teams, and I know we're still not sure what the Nets are, but they usually lose. And I think what you saw over 72 hours against Minnesota and Brooklyn is exactly what they are. They're a mediocre 500 team. But yep. I got to tell you, last night was oh, great. Oh, was last night fun for you? It really was. Did you, know you what the enjoy best, last night? You know what the best part was? And no one will say this because they don't know. But I'll tell you. I went to the game last night. I was in the building. Nice. I have been to many, many, many Nets-Knicks games. And I call it like it is. There's tons of Knicks fans. I am outnumbered many times in my own building. Last night was the first time where I really looked around and said, Yeah, there's Knicks fans here. Not that many. I thought it was about 70, 30 Nets fans. And I don't mean based on sound, because obviously the Knicks fan didn't have much to cheer up other than a couple of Julius Randle early threes. But just looking around the arena. Yeah. So that was rewarding for me. But there's something else that isn't being reported that I need to bring up to you. Yeah, go ahead. I went to the game last night. Yes, you did with your dad. As I'm walking in, I heard a guy scream, because I just heard it, didn't know what was going on. And then the so-called Holocaust. I'm like, whoa, what the, what's going on? Oh, boy. No, this is serious. Yeah. I turn around and there were protesters. They were protesting the net suspension of Kyrie Irving. There were protesters at every gate 
entering Barclays Center. Give me, give me an idea how many people we're talking about. I would say for each protest, about seven or eight guys. All right. So figure there are five or six kids. Let's say 35 people. I'm yeah. not saying it's thousands of people, hundreds of people. And I don't know what the message was. I want to make that clear. I didn't stick around, but I did hear that one line. The so-called Holocaust. So let me get this right. So in Brooklyn, which has a decent size of Jewish community, there were people that were protesting the suspension of Kyrie Irving and uttering things like you just said, which is obviously abhorrent and disgusting, the so-called Holocaust, as if it didn't happen. We know there are deniers out there. We've been through that you know, uh, on a much larger scale nationwide over the last couple of years. But there was not a single person protesting uh, Kyrie Irving being on the Nets from the Jewish community he's not. over the last week, right? He's suspended now, right? Right, 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 right. So there, there, and that that's the point here, and that's why the Kyrie Irving was and is so important, and why he should have been suspended once he decided to, you know, be defiant and not apologize or recognize that he was uh, he read or saw, you know, bad information historically about the Jewish people, um, and that is that there are people out there that look to him for a platform to engage in conversations that are, frankly, objectionable and reprehensible. And he has given those people it, a platform. It's now. why, Craig, and I know you're not going to believe me, people are going to think this is basketball-related, the ball's moving, they're playing better defense. Trust me, I see what's happening on the floor. They are playing better basketball without Kyrie Irving. Put that aside. Yeah, He can't play for the Nets ever again. Too much has happened. He can't do enough. To walk this back Because once you're going to come out and say, hey, those of you that were outside Barclays last night, uh, you know, protesting my suspension and supporting the video that we've all talked about and infinitum already and far too much, uh, you know, b back down he's on it. He's not going to. Of course he's and not going not, to. Not and that's enough. why it's dangerous. It can't happen. Like, I'm seriously, uh, take the basketball aside because it's yep. an interesting discussion we're not going to have here about the good and the yeah. bad of Kyrie on the basketball yep. floor. But... I don't think you can walk that back. And so, were there I, people getting in their faces challenging no, them? No. So most people just no. kind of stepped aside and passed. Because I want to be fair about this, Craig. I didn't stick around to hear their message. I got you. So you I heard enough. I heard one thing. Yeah. One thing I heard. I turned around. I was like, "What?" And were they chanting stuff? Did they have signs? There were signs. There were T-shirts. There was a guy there with a megaphone. Really? Yeah, nice. yeah. And I, I guess just hearing that one thing, that one specific thing, was enough for me to say. I can't listen to the rest of what you want to say. Yeah. And they lost and I, me there. And here's the thing. While I'm not going to blame Kyrie for the way other people already feel, uh, as a disgusting as it might be, he lends credence to it because, yes. of, uh, because of the platform and the notoriety that he has as an American celebrity who plays basketball. And that's why it was so dangerous. And that's why, for those of you that still don't understand why it was and is such a big deal, why the NBA failed the community by not coming down immediately, why the Nets at first failed their community by not coming down immediately and letting him play two games, I think it was, after the whole brouhaha happened, why there were so many people suggesting and making the point that we are bordering on something that is very dangerous. You saw it last night. I saw it last night. Yep. It's when I realized walking into the arena, there really isn't any turning back from this now. Like, he can't play another game for the Brooklyn right. Nets. Right, and let him be a martyr for those people. I got no problem with that. And the sad thing is, I am Jewish. Uh, I love watching Kyrie Irving play basketball. I've told you that since we started this show two years ago. He's one of the most electrifying and talented ball players I've ever seen in my life, and I love watching him play. But I am with you on well, that and now, and I didn't know that happened last night. No, no, it wasn't really reported much. I mean, maybe there's an article somewhere about it, but I witnessed it. I saw it, and, and here's the battle I have. I want to win a championship. And despite the easy rhetoric of they're better without him in the short term, which they are, the ball is moving more, they're playing more defense, Kevin Durant looks happier. They have a greater ability to win with a talent like Kyrie Irving buying in on the floor. No doubt. So I do think that the greatest situation is that everyone, everything works out and he plays basketball and he buys in and they win. That's the greatest situation. Not gonna but I just don't think it can happen anymore. No, and here's the deal. Even as sports fans, and there's no bigger sports fan I know than you, the fact that you are willing to make a stand as a person saying this might not be the best thing for my goal of winning a championship because of how talented he is, but there are other things that are bigger than that. 
And I think that's exactly well, what you're saying. Because you saying. know what? Here's the thing. Twitter's fake, right? We see Twitter, but mean, horrible things on Twitter feel fake. Someone sits behind a computer, they throw something out there, and it's like, eh, it's not right. the real world. When you're in the real world, yep. and you're walking down Flatbush Avenue, yeah. and you see a message that in my ear, all I heard was hate when I hear that. That's real. Yeah. It's and tangible. that's when you say, wow, that's only there because of a link being tweeted out. And look, I've heard people say, well, if it wasn't reported on, it never would have been a story. Yeah, that's nonsense. That's, that's true, yeah. but that doesn't mean it shouldn't be reported on. Right, like we're going to put our heads in the sand, and if nobody reports it, then it's not happening in Correct. my backyard? Right. right. Yeah, we've done that before. It doesn't end well. Right. Because then you empower people to do worse things and worse things, and then all of a sudden you got yourself a real problem on your hands. But here's the good thing. Here's the opposite of that. Matter of fact, I don't want to make this bigger than what it is, but that's what happened in the early, late 30s, of early course. 40s in Europe. We're all right? thinking the same thing. Oh, they're good. Oh, no, 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 no. Next thing you know. But then you go in the building, and it's beautiful basketball. And say this, admit this, Nick fans, about Kevin Durant, who will probably end up being traded at some point, right? It's probably going to end that way. Well, Kevin Durant said after the game about the rivalry with the Knicks, about kind of going after Nick fans. Yeah. Isn't that what we want from our athletes? By the way, I, I appreciate it. Every word he said, I'll do you one better. If you haven't seen the video, I thought it was after the game. It was actually before the game. There are three or four kids. They look like maybe young teenage kids. And they're all rocking Nick jerseys. Right. And, uh, you know, they're yelling at the court. This is, I was told, before the game. It was before the game. So yes. the building's really kind of empty still at this point. And these kids are yelling whatever they're yelling. They get Kevin Durant's attention. And I frankly thought this was awesome. I really did. Kevin Durant hears it, looks up, sees three or four kids, maybe in their mid-teenage years, right? Right. And starts booing them. <laughs> <laughs> and I just thought it was so awesome because it was organic. Yeah. It wasn't mean. It was back and forth. And, when, and the kids loved it. Of course. And after the game, when he was asked about his interaction with Nick fans, he had a big smile on his face and he said, as long as I wear this jersey... I'm going to tell Nick fans what I think. Which is great. Of like I, I honest to God wish uh, on the Knicks side, and Brunson has only been here for three weeks, so I can't ask him to do it yet. I wish we had a star player anywhere near the talent of Kevin Durant who felt the same way. Because then you have a fun rivalry. Absolutely. Like I would love to see a Met or a Yankee do that. And I know playfully we're going to hate the other guy because he's on the other team. But that warmed my heart. It's, it's been tough warming back up to Kevin Durant, considering he doesn't want to be with me, considering he wanted to dump my ass three, four months ago. But when you put up a beautiful 29, 12, and 12 triple-double. Not bad. And you annihilate the Knicks yet again. By, by, by the way, it wasn't at no point that the Knicks even show an interest in making it competitive. You know, the one thing Sonny's right about, well, you expect there's going to be a run. They're going to cut 25 to 14, right. whatever it is. Like right. a silly run, you know, because every team does that. Right. And not last well, night. They had one very, very tiny run, and this is uh, warming me up to Jacques Vaughn. They went on like a 5-0 run, I think cut it to about 15 or 16, and immediately Jacques called a timeout. And that's one thing I want from my coach. Active. Don't mess around. Yep. Don't let that get to 10 or 8. Call a freaking timeout. So early on, all good. To my fellow friends who are Nick fans, sorry about last night. Uh, good luck next time. Maybe you'll beat us eventually. Don't be that guy. Don't, don't be that guy. Someday you'll beat us. One day. One day. <laughs> let's hope we're not 10 games under 500 when it happens. But listen, I didn't realize that that happened uh, outside the building last night. And that's upsetting to me because you would think, hey, just people would know better, right? Like, um, And the fact that people would organize, because that had to be organized. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The people had to get together and have a meeting about let's protest outside Barclays to support not just Kyrie, but the, the issue at hand here, mm -hmm. and that's anti-Semitism, right? And the fact that you could get 20, 30, 40, 50 people, whatever the total number was, around the entire building there to actually organize a protest uh, which basically shows their support for anti-Semitism is, is sad. But I can't say I'm surprised anymore, right? Mm. And that's maybe the worst part about it. Unfortunately. That it's not all that shocking to us anymore. Anyway, we'll get your calls on it. If you went to the game last night, and look, 18,000 of you did, and you saw those protesters, I'd love to get your take on it, by all means. I did not know about that. Uh, coming to you live from the Town Fair Tire Studios, Powered by Town Fair Tire. Nobody beats Town Fair Tire. Nobody.
Well, LeBron James just chimed in on Kyrie Irving. I just saw this about five minutes ago. Go. You want to hear this? Yeah, please. I told you guys, I don't believe... Oh, let me just confirm it's really LeBron James. Yeah. Okay, it is. Now, are you sure, I, sure? Yeah, because I clicked like, on... Now you, be sure, please. <laughs> no, I swear. Because the other day, LeBron did officially come out finally and say, you know, he harms some people, and I don't, I'm don't. i not down with that. Yeah. No, LeBron James, what you have to do right now on Twitter until things are figured out is click on the account. And make sure it's got the amount of followers an account like LeBron would have. Yeah. So LeBron has 52 million followers. I feel good. I told you guys I don't believe in sharing hurtful information. And I'll continue to be that way. But Kyrie apologized and he should be able to play. That's what I think. It's that simple. Help him learn, but he should be playing. When he's asked to get back on the floor, when he's asked to do it to get back on the floor, I think it's excessive in my opinion. He's not the person that's being portrayed of him. Anyways, back to my rehab session. Yeah, it's funny because he demanded that a couple owners be forced to sell their teams over words also, right? Well, and also the Nets put out a list of things for him to do. Yes. And by the way, to your credit, Craig, there are things you suggested a week and a half ago. Yeah. You came on the air and said, this is what I think he should have to do. Yep. Now, I'm not saying the Nets listen to you, but maybe they did because they listen to everybody else. Not going to hire Yudoka, suspend Kyrie Irving. So it's very possible the Nets said, oh, that's a good idea, Craig. As far as I know, he's only done one of those six things. And that's meet with the... Uh, no, no, that's just apologizing. Oh, just the, uh, the written apology. On yeah. social media. I don't think any of those other things have happened. Yeah, well, we know he met with the ADL at some point and the commissioner now, but as far as the other things go, I don't know if he has or hasn't. And I'm starting to lean. I, I, was, I was always... I never agreed with you that he would never play for the Nets again. I'm leaning that way that way now. Yeah. And, we, and we could both be dead wrong on it. And that's not even the point of this. Because uh, you could argue that as much as you want. You know, how much blood do you want to get from the stone uh, before you say, okay, we're paying the guy to play basketball. We're going to let him play basketball. And there's no right answer to it. You can have whatever your opinion is. That's your right answer. Well, here's the just the facts. Everyone has it. He has now missed four games. It's a minimum five-game suspension. Yep. So we know he's not playing Saturday in L.A. against the Clippers. But the Nets play Sunday. He would be eligible to play that game in L.A. against the Lakers. We'll see. Do I think there's any chance he plays? No. All right. Well, we're going to find out. 